Well, hello everyone. This video is gonna be about our RV refrigerator. We brought it home, plugged it in, got everything ready to go, and it wouldn't work. You would come here and you would push, you know, this is off because the button's out. You would push on and nothing, you know. You can mess with this, nothing, you know, nothing. There's no power coming to this upper control unit. There are two main control boards on these RV refrigerators, especially the Dometic refrigerators like this, which are very common, which are in most of the RVs. Behind this little plastic thing here is one control panel. You can go online and you can actually order this control panel. Um, not real expensive, under 50 bucks from what I remember. It's pretty easy to take out. There it goes. And it's this, it's basically just this tiny little control panel and this little piece and it actually will pop out there's some little plastic tabs so when you order it usually you're just going to get this little piece here you're not going to get this whole trim piece it connects on the board here that wire goes up to the top of the fridge but it actually goes all the way out to the back of the fridge uh, and there's a place where you can plug that into the main control board if you look online a lot of people say they have to replace this control board for this to start working now this was not our problem but this could be one of your problems. So we're going to go through on this video how to figure out where your problem is using a multimeter and checking the electrical connections. So this on and off switch, this is controlled by 12 volt power. But again, you're looking at this, no matter what you do, you turn this on and you open up the fridge. You don't have your little light, like we have a little light here, our light doesn't come on. Nothing happens, you know, fridge is defrosted or defrosting and you have absolutely no power. We're gonna go figure out why. So one of the places you can look is here. So like this is our control unit, basically our breaker box for the RV. And on ours, you can see here, it's got like AC, microwave, converter, GFI, refrigerator. This, though, is referring to your 120 volt. So these are the breakers, and these are going to be your 120 volt power. So here, this is controlling that. So first thing I'm going to do is check and make sure that my breaker is good. You know, a lot of times you have to turn them off, turn them back on, and then you can look. But still, we have no power there. You make the assumption that if the breaker's not tripped, uh, that you're probably getting 120 volt power and of course we're going to test that uh, the other thing is is there's these regular 12 volt fuses now on mine I could not find a 12 volt fuse that actually ran the refrigerator uh, there's a there's a fuse that's on the control panel but I couldn't find any fuse between my battery and that refrigerator so these fuses if they blow, that's what that little red LED light down there is for. If a fuse blows, the little red light's supposed to illuminate to let you know that that fuse is busted. Uh, right now they're not, and I have tested it before by pulling out one of these fuses, and it will illuminate the red LED underneath it, saying that the connection's been lost. Right now, there's no red LEDs. So I'm assuming that all of the fuses are good there, and the breaker's good. So with this assumption, we're getting 12 volt power, and we're getting 120 volt power. So on the outside of your RV, if you should have a panel that looks something like this, and usually you just twist these little tabs. You might need to use a screwdriver. It's got a flat head, little head on it, but usually I can just turn these and pull it off. Yep. All right, so I pulled that off. This is what they look like from the back. And let's set that down. So first thing, and when you're going to take this apart, I mean, if you see this, this yellow uh, sulfur looking build up here, this is bad. So if you see this on your refrigerator, that means you probably have a leak in your cooling system, which would be the ammonia coming out, you know, whatever, whatever it is they put in that system. Um, this is actually our problem. And behind this panel, this metal panel when I took it apart there's all of this buildup from that going so we know what that problem is and the reason 
our panel is completely dead on the inside is because the behind this panel which I'll take off in a second there is a little fuse that um, will, will blow it's more of like a breaker it'll just pop and that's it it won't power anything and that happens because this boiler that's back here uh, had a leak and it was running out running low and it's there for safety reasons it, it's, it turns off on purpose so that's the problem there but if you're not getting any power there this isn't your problem here if you don't have this problem then you want to come back here you're going to want to check these are your 12 volt leads in this is 12 volt in to run the little control panels run this little control this is a control board back here this is going to be your rv 110 plug you'll usually have an outlet on the side like this one just has a little 120 plug for the refrigerator when it's running on 120 volt and then of course you have your propane here um, that runs your boiler also all right so let's get to uh, using this multimeter and testing out where the electricity is that's the control panel opened up here's the little cover that goes on it but I took the cover off so that way I can get into the control panel and meter out where all the electricity is going and where it's not going so to start with we're gonna start to make sure we have 120 volt power and we have 12 volt power at least making it to the fridge okay so you've got this this plate that was here pulled off uh, because these are 12 volt lines we're gonna have to check there and then you've got the front of this pulled off here so you can check your 12 volt and your 120 uh, power so you need to have a multimeter that can read both DC volts and AC volts those are the two you're gonna have to be able to switch between to get uh, a good reading I'm gonna show you how to do that now uh, some of the tools you may need this is just a screwdriver this is a bit screwdriver that's ratcheting and then a pair of needle nose pliers works pretty good if you need to pull off any of these uh, connectors here so the first thing I'm gonna do is the 12 volt power because technically you can run your refrigerator off of 12 volt without having AC power um, using propane so first thing I'm gonna do is make it number one to check the 12 volt power so on this one I'm gonna do DC volts and I'm gonna put it at 20 uh, so that way it can test you know 12 volts turn it on uh, first thing you do is ground of course you know you can ground out wherever so I'm just gonna put the ground underneath there and if you notice here on the RV you're gonna see a little plate here that says 12 V DC so that's your 12 volt DC ends so this is where your battery connectors the wires from your battery go into this refrigerator so what you should have is at least one of these legs which I'm assuming is this one needs to be given 12 volt positive power and as you can see there it's given 13.25 which is good we're on shore power right now so the converter is pushing out you know the charging voltage of 13.2625 that's normal uh, if I touch the other one I'm not getting anything because that's the ground and we're just doing ground so we know we're at least getting 12 volt power to the refrigerator so now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna switch over to AC power I'm gonna pick 200 for AC power because we're talking about 120 I'm gonna ground it but now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna unplug the refrigerator this is the 120 volt refrigerator plug I'm unplugging it and we have an outlet that's installed right over here right so again I'm gonna just go ahead and put one of these in the negative and one of these in the positive and I'm getting 120 volts right at 120 so that means my outlets good and uh, that's what we need so we know we're at least getting power to the refrigerator now we need to find out is the power making it all the way through the refrigerator back into the controls all right so now that we've tested this power outlet over here I'm gonna plug the 120 volt power back in and let's see it's right here all right so now got the power plug plugged in we know we got the 12 volt power making it to this port we've got this plugged in I'm gonna make sure there's nothing wrong with this power line and I'm gonna test the AC line in the black one is gonna be the positive typically and then the white ones typically neutral 
and then another wire is in there green and that one's grounded out to this uh, metal plate here so I should be able to put this multimeter up here and I should be able to touch ground and now I'm going to touch this AC line port here so if you can see that we have 120 volts making it into the actual board where the jumper is or where the connector is so we know we're getting 120 volts in to the connector all right so we tested the AC 110 volts so now we want to test the DC here the 12 volts so we've got to turn it back to DC so now we're doing DC volts and so I'm gonna go over here and I'm gonna to touch that battery terminal there it is so 13.2725 whatever that is uh, battery is making it to the control board so we know we're good now this is where my problem actually came into play and this is how I found where the issue was so when I tested this earlier I was not getting 12 volts into this jumper so I was like okay well why am I not getting 12 volts into this connector here so what I did is I traced this 12 volts back and the 12 volts if you look at it you're gonna have this red wire it actually comes back along all of this and it connects to this sensor here whatever this uh, I believe this is some kind of like heat sensor or something um, and what's really tricky here, so this is something I definitely would want to look at, is there is this little black button here on this sensor. So this little black button was not popped out where you could visually see it, but it was just barely sticking out. Only reason I knew it was sticking out is because when I pushed it with this little lead, I heard a tiny little snap. So what's happening is, is from the 12 volt over here the power is then coming up this red red wire behind it there's a red wire here and it goes up and it comes to this first so this gets 12 volt power and then it comes across through this sensor whatever this is here and then it goes back out the other direction to the actual control panel so if this little button is triggered then you're cutting off your 12 volt power which is cutting off everything and that's exactly what happened to my refrigerator on this RV is this somehow tripped and this was just barely sticking out just a little bit so pushing this back in I heard it click and then I got my 12 volt power back at my control panel now that's not where we're gonna stop but if that tripped you really need to look for this scenario or something like this because there's a reason those trip and that's because there's a problem with the boiler. So now what we're going to look at though is let's say that's not your problem and you come over here and you test this battery port here and it does give you the 13 volts that you're looking for or 12 and a half based on if you're on battery or not. If that's good then what we're going to do is we're going to look at Okay, you've got AC power going in, you got DC power going in, but your control panel over there is not lighting up. So, that control panel is ran from this jumper, this display connector here. You would pull this connector off. So, to pull the connector off, again, it's just got this little push button you have to push. You pull that connector off. Now, we're going to check and see if that's getting 12 volt power. So, again, you got to make sure you're grounded. And then we're going to come over here and look if any of this display is getting 12 volt power. So very first port that I touch, I'm getting 12 volt power. Next one's nothing. So this is basically hot, not hot. The middle one top, the middle one to the front's not hot. This one's not hot. This one's not hot. And this one's not hot so basically the battery lead in is this top left port here and I'm getting power so if you're not getting power to this port you could have some short or some problem with this lower control board this board here is very common to go out so this is usually from what I've read this is 
one of the major components that goes out is this control board. The second most popular component to go out is the other control board that's inside the RV. Now, if you're getting power here and it's telling you 12.8 or whatever voltage, you know, regulated voltage from your battery, if you're getting 12 volt power in this port and you have this plug plugged in right here and you plug it in, but yet in your RV, you're not getting any lights or anything coming on on that top control panel, then most likely that top control panel is bad and you're gonna need to replace it. If you've got power going into your control panel and it's not giving you 12 volts at this connector, you probably have a problem with this lower control panel. Now, those are the easiest things to check. You can, ch there's a fuse. On mine, there's two fuses. On some of the newer boards, there's only one. But you can also check these two fuses here. This is a 120 volt fuse. And I believe this other fuse over here to the left is the 12 volt fuse. I don't have fuses on the inside. They have fuses here on the board. But we'll go ahead and test these fuses. I know the fuses are good. So this is still DC power. I'm actually gonna switch it over to AC because I don't wanna blow out my multimeter if it's a lot more than 20 volts. And I'm gonna test them. I know this one here, if I ground it, this one's 120. So at this side, to tell if a fuse is good, you'll get 120 off of both, or you'll get the same voltage off of both sides. And I am getting the same voltage off of both sides. This fuse is good. So now I'm gonna test this fuse. And this one again, like I said, is the 12 volt fuse. So I gotta switch back to DC power, touch it to the ground. I've got 13.27 volts there and 13.27 volts there. So that fuse is also good. But basically the information I showed you here should be able to help you diagnose your upper control panel, your lower control panel, and then also checking on your, your power into your control panel. So I'm hoping this helped. We're actually gonna have another video coming up soon to show what we did, when we pulled this out and what we replaced it with. So keep an eye out for that. That's gonna be coming soon. And I'll put a, a link down either in the comments or, or put a card on this video to that video when I get it posted. So if this video was helpful and helped you diagnose some things on your fridge, please give me a thumbs up on this video. If you would also please subscribe to our channel. It's that red button down below that says subscribe. That really helps me out. And good luck with your system. Hopefully it's a minor issue and you're able to figure it out and not have to bring it in. And until the next video, thank y'all. Y'all take care.